Onique and her daddy responded to her son. I thought very long and hard about this. And um, for those of you who know me, you know this hits home for me because my mama is trifling, okay? <laughs> if you've read my book, uh, my first book, Praying for Our Children, but if you know me personally and you've been in the husband profile, you know the situation with my mom. I might have mentioned something here or there. And uh, we talked about the toxic mother in the husband profile course. But let me say that I really do appreciate Monique saying in another interview that she had no interest in being a mother when she had her eldest son. She was younger and she was about getting the bag. I really do appreciate her saying that. And I think that if a lot of toxic moms, trifling mamas would admit to their wrongs, then maybe we wouldn't be so angry with them, okay? <laughs> I'm not saying I'm angry or anything like that. <laughs> hey, y'all, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. We had a snow day here in Jersey yesterday. Girl, I stayed home. I've been home since Friday. I love my... I don't know how people don't like staying home. I love my house. I love being home. I just love doing things for my family. But I, we're back out here in these streets today. I want to thank you for your love and support. Be sure to subscribe, thumbs up. Thank you for those of you who have signed up for the Husband Profile course and is emailing me for the book club. Uh, we're going to get we gonna get this book club together, okay? And uh, Husband Profile course begins in April. Day for date is coming very soon. I absolutely love you. So I'm going to speed this up. I'm going dr to drop off the screen and I'm going to speed this up um, with Monique and her r uh, responding to her son. I did not appreciate Monique letting her daddy drag the son. I don't, I don't like that. Okay. But I will say... I appreciate her. In another interview, say she had no interest in being her in in being a mom, and she that was a sacrifice she made about getting the bag. Y'all know I had a daughter at sixteen, and let me tell you, to this day, my daughter's gonna be thirteen August. People still call her my handbag because I just believe when you become a mom, you will have to protect your kid and be there for your child. And I understand she was get trying to get the bag to really help her son and the generation, but then it really affected the son. So balance is the key. I do believe you can get the bag and still be a good mom. I don't think you have to abandon your child. And, you know, it's just really messy and it's very emotional. And I, I, for those of people saying that Shalon or the son is wrong, I don't think he's wrong for airing his grievances publicly. Monique made a public statement about him. Talk about she praying to the universe and allowing the universe to bring healing and all this stuff. So he responded. I can see both sides. I can hear his hurt. I understand his pain. And I understand Monique was trifling mama. I understand she was trying to get the bag. And I understand that she sacrificed her son for the bag. And like she said, there is a price to pay. And the price she's paying is this drama between her and her son. So I, I, I see both sides. I understand both sides. But let's just understand, y'all, that there are some trifling mamas out there. And I have to explain this to my husband because my husband has a very, very good, has, rest her soul, a very good, loving mom. So People who have good mamas don't understand you saying your mama is trifling or your mama is jacked up or you don't talk to your mother or you've cut your mother off. They just don't understand because they don't, they had a good mom. So I really understand him. But let me just go ahead and play this video. I'm going to drop off and um i'm gonna let this video run i speed it up so that we can get through it really quick because it's almost 40 minutes long all right i love y'all let me know what y'all think about this we got it all right we're gonna wait for some of the babies to come in the room so we can have this conversation and i paid my monthly bill so hopefully this won't 
You would do and I'm borrowing you. this. Let me say, I'm borrowing because this is the full video from Say That hey, TV. Baby. Say That TV. Hey, hey. Okay, shout out to Say we'll That just wait TV. We're just waiting for y'all to come on in the room. Video, so we can um, have this conversation. you're the only Without person community. I found that has all three or four parts of it, okay? What did I say? Shout oh, out to Say That TV. Roll, baby. Let's rock and roll. Mm -hmm. The title of our conversation or the theme of it is called The Long Way Around Because mm. Ain't No Shortcuts. Pickles, stop playing with that paper, please. The reason we're having it is a multitude of reasons, but we're going to start off with there was a Instagram that was put up, or I guess. It was TikTok. Baby. TikTok that was put up by. My son. My oldest son, Shalom. And this is what I want to say to this. There are some people that are saying, oh, you should be ashamed of your mothering skills. You should be ashamed of yourself. This is what I'll say. Let's let it play out. Because the same ones that said to me, I was crazy, I was deranged, we watched it play out. So just like with my son, we'll watch this play out. And I do want to address this though, Shalon. When you say her daddy, her daddy, then that's when mommy going to say stop playing because you know this has been Uncle Sid your whole life. Um let me just say, I didn't like I didn't like that. Oh, let's let's just make this play out. I need to talk through this, but I don't got time. Because what Monique is saying is his fault. And it's not his fault. You abandoned him. Maybe I'm using the wrong word. It's not abandoned. You wasn't there. You sacrificed your son for the bag. You said with your own mouth, you was not interested in being a mom and interested in being a wife. You was interested about taking, not in this video, taking pictures and being, so we're not going to let nothing play out, Monique. Either you're going to take responsibility or you're not, but all this going back and forth, talking about let this play out. I don't understand it. It's your fault. You caused this boy trauma and hurt and rejection. Abandon is not the right word. It's, there's another word I need to use. What's the other word? Reject, I don't know, child, but anyway. Uncle said knew you before you knew you. So for you to say her three sons, yes, you're absolutely right. He has three sons. He can't claim you as his son because he's always been Uncle Sid and he knows your daddy very well. And love that brother. And the irony of all of this is not what is said, but what's left off. Yes. See, you're, you're leaving off the fact that the last time we laid eyes on you, your mother got you everything you needed for the newborn baby about three years ago. You're forgetting about how I from Georgia am talking you through getting your car after we gave you the half of the down payment for it. And you were 31 years of age, 32 years of age at that point. And I'm negotiating the deal with the dealer for you as you sit there. And you have the vehicle you're driving right now because of your mother. These are the things that you're leaving out when you're expressing what you're expressing in reference to your mother. You're not expressing the relationship that you have with your father. And let me, let me say this. This is why I need to talk through this. They always want to bring up the money thing, right? Y'all parents, mamas, toxic people, always want to bring up i bought you a car i bought you this i gave you this so that should suffice for you i gotta find that word not being there for me you not interested in being a mom or good mom thank you for the car but it, it still does not heal the pain of you not being there for me <sighs> where you spoke ill to him, not to mention spoke ill to your mother, but somehow your mother and father and I all have a loving relationship and communicate back and forth because of the love that we have for you. The one thing these individuals and to the individuals out here that oftentimes speak after they've heard one side of the story, there's an old saying, believe half of what you see and none of what it is that you hear. Please don't take our word for it. But what we will convey is this. Those who are parents and have raised their parents up to being adults. The children. Raise their children up to being adults. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> Those who are parents that raise their children into adulthood know that there comes a time and a place 
in which they determine their own decisions, their own path. You can have multiple children that multiple children that are raised in one house, but they act and they take on different things. The reason why it was so important for us to entertain these conversations that we typically have privately or that we're influenced to have privately amongst the people in our community is because we need to stop being embarrassed about being human beings and about being black human beings. You will oftentimes hear us saying we are embarrassing ourselves in front of them. Who is them? Who are they? Because when you hear someone articulate these things, that is the slave's mentality. It makes us believe that we as black people need to conduct ourselves with dignity because white people are watching. You should conduct yourself with dignity because the spirit of you is watching. But we need to have these conversations out loud and taboo because we have a finite period of time together here on this earth. You will travel through infinity with the spirit that you have all alone. And you will not remember the ridicule that you receive, but you will be judging yourself. You will be determining for the rest of your life which way that you go as you have thus far. So this conversation is about speaking directly to what situations are. And many people oftentimes, when they are uh, presented with an issue, they stay quiet, they hide, they disappear. And what we're saying is that's not who we are, because what you cannot do is you cannot trick an honest person. Come on. You can demean, you can say whatever you want to say about them negatively. But what will happen is truth has a way of standing the test of time. I, I, I forgot to have my, my phone to read the last text message that I gave to you, Shalana, where I told you about the understanding of how you are speaking to a woman. And how you as a man and how you perceive things may be completely different from how your wife, how your mother, how your sister, how your daughter will look at things. And when you learn how to communicate a little bit better, then things will happen a little bit better. You young man, because of the challenges that this young brother has had with mental illness. So we're communicating that out loud to speak to our community. And to see, say, I don't like that. Wrong. If we had, I don't like that because now what you're saying is it's because of mental illness. See, they're still not addressing his pain. They refuse to acknowledge his pain and address his pain. Oh, it's because of mental illness. Well, maybe the rejection that he experienced as a child has caused mental illness. Have y'all thought about that? <sighs> have more public conversations. There will be less private angst. Come on. There will be less private issues that we carry on because we're afraid to communicate in front of white folks. So when we get to a place where you want to be free, you will stop being scared to say what's real. You'll stop being fearful of having conversations that normally take place in private and nobody ever really knows the outcome. And and from there, when you were saying earlier about how we're looking, how we're looking, how we're looking in front of white folks. When I do hear our brother Greg Mathis say, the studio is watching y'all and the executives are watching y'all. So what? If the executives are watching closely, the individuals that would want to interact with us are those who are engaged or in and are in alignment with what is true. See, the first question would not be, uh, Stephen A. Smith, why did you video someone? Or you won't entertain uh, Kevin Hart is the biggest star in the world. She said that. Not only did she say that, not only when she spoke about Oprah and Tyler, these are individuals that you failed to hear that she said she loves them. And when you love folks, you tell them what they need to know, not what they want to hear. We've put, in, we've put certain individuals in such a status that we've disallowed them to be human beings. And on the note, we're taking the long way around and that there are no shortcuts. So you could take the shortcut and cross through Miss Evelyn's yard, but you know she got a pit bull. And he may or may not be in that yard, but you know for sure if you get in that yard and he is in that yard, you will definitely be chased. It is a bit safer to go around the long way because not only is it the right thing to do because you're not cutting through somebody's yard, their grass, trespassing on their property. But what happens is it may be a longer journey, but it's worth the trip. So we're going to take the long way around and we're not going to call out these individuals on platforms like this. We're going to call them up 
Now, please don't confuse. When Monique is standing on stage, she has an artistic paintbrush designed to paint her life and make people laugh in the way in which a comedian is supposed to do. So her life experiences are fair game. Mm. They're fair game. Again. So when she says what she says on stage, please don't say it's the way that she said it. <laughs> because she's on stage. We're dealing with when we're not on stage, what is being said. And again, to revisit Brother Stephen A., I'd like to point something out to you. When you sit there and you say that a black woman looks bitter because she's telling her personal truth. When you sit there and you speak in reference to the individuals that she spoke about, you're not because you wanted to distinguish yourself from Shannon Sharp as being a, general, a journalist, but you said you don't know what's happening, you don't know what's going on, and you don't care to know. That right there is you sacrificing your journalistic integrity because it is your job to know when you make assertions about certain individuals and not form an opinion, and you are supposed to ask the questions such as, when she said what she said regarding Kevin Hart and David Becky, as it re relates to him uh, reneging on what he promised, and you ask the question, well, is there a reason, Monique, that he would do that? Here's the question you should ask. Is what she said true? And if there was a reason why he would have done that, wouldn't that, would there not have been a reason why he wouldn't have called her first to say, I've got to take that deal back? See, when we stay grounded in this thing called ethics, Come on. when we stand grounded in this thing called right, it's going to carve through all of the nonsense that you were trying to communicate. And I can see based upon watching you throughout the years that you consider yourself an intellect. And please forgive me for speaking in this manner as it relates to Monique. As a black man, what happens is the black woman should sometimes not have to defend herself. Mm. Sometimes there's a level of defense that should be had on her behalf for we as black men, because Monique didn't step to you when you were calling Kyrie Irving out for being a man and making a decision as a man to not get a shot and ridiculing him because his father raised a man. You should not have called out Kwame Brown in the way that you did calling him a bust because you have forgotten that that black man has a family and any man that has had the length of time that he had to live the dream in the NBA is not a bust in my book. He's a hero. He's a hero. So when you call Jason Whitlock a fat bastard, but you're telling Monique who referred to them as her brother and her sister and she loves them, but you can call Jason Whitlock a fat bastard. My question to you, why are you allowed to speak your truth? But this black woman is not. Help me. Help me. I need the help. It is low hanging fruit to attack a black man. That was Cat Williams and Monique that did the interview. Why is it that you singled Monique out? Why is it? She was polite. You're not asking, was she inaccurate when she spoke about uh, uh, um, Tiffany Haddish? Though there's nothing but love, there's nothing but love. The irony is, is that our sister Tiffany Haddish went to GQ magazine to say, I'm glad I don't have that husband of hers for standing for Monique and standing with Monique when we were talking about pay inequality only for her to turn around and speak about the pay inequality. See, we will succumb to what it is that we support when what we support is wrong. You know, if I may say this to you, Stephen A. Smith, what you said when you said I'm bitter and my light don't shine no more, what you said to black women without saying it was be quiet. Be seen and not heard. And if you have a black woman in your life, and I believe I saw you in a picture with your beautiful queen. Are you encouraging her through your message by what you said to Monique that you were in support of her voicing her concerns when being mistreated? Or are you encouraging her and other black women? I don't know if you have children, but if you have a daughter, because I've heard you speak with a great deal of reverence for your mother and for your sister. You should talk to them and ask them. Have they It just sounds like they just have so many grievances against everybody. You know, I understand one or two people, but you can't have grievances against everybody. Child, this is toxic. I just cannot. They've been encouraged in this life to speak their truth or discouraged about speaking their truth. And um, I'm going to see it on stage. <laughs> yeah, again, got to see you on stage. But no. this is the off the stage conversation to let y'all know that the people that we discuss, again, we want to reiterate, Oprah, Tyler, and I'll stand there for a moment. As we come before you feeling free to discuss anything that 
is said about us, whereby it's made to appear like we've done something wrong. If we are giving people the impression that we are perfect, I want to make it clear right now, we are not. So as imperfect people, we have no inhibitions about giving an apology when you owe it to somebody. Have no indignations, no problems, no apprehensions. But we must ask ourselves, how can individuals like Tyler Perry, who said that Monique was difficult, and indict her as difficult in the business, okay, lose parts, how can she come to court to stand trial to defend her position under the light of the court of public opinion, but the very one who accused her, he stays hidden? Why would that be? Why would that be? Mother Oprah, Lord of the master classes, okay? The one who is now, aren't they getting ready to give some sort of talk in reference to, what was it? Um, I know part of it was forgiveness. Oh, and it, yeah, uh -huh. her and Tyler. It was like a D word. It was, uh, uh, I forgot, and, 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 and forgiveness. What you may want to give a seminar about is how not to just forgive, but how to ask for forgiveness. See, we're not dealing with the Pythagorean theory. This is not A plus B squared. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This is nothing uh, challenging. This is very simplistic. If you were comfortable, Oprah Winfrey, going on the CBS morning show, saying that if we make Harvey Weinstein the center point of sexual assault, we're missing the boat. And you'd like to look in the silver cloud as it relates to that. Or you having a documentary on our brother, Michael Jackson, after he was found not guilty in the court of public opinion, but you want to do a documentary on him, but you don't want to speak up for a black woman who you know, based upon all your business endeavors, that when you do not have a contract with someone, you do not owe them anything, but you allow that to ride. And I, again, we make it a habit of not just calling up what is wrong, but what's right. See, there was a woman named Barbara Walters. She made, she had to address the public because there was a rumor that Monique was difficult to interview with. That woman could have uh, 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 been a proud graduate or student from the Oprah Winfrey uh, School of Duck and Dodge. I'm not going to face things <laughs> publicly and not said a word. But instead, what did she do? She came out immediately, immediately and said that is a lie. She was wonderful to work with and the whole nine. Brother Tyler Perry, listen. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. The world is listening to you tell Monique that you were wrong for doing something. You were wrong for telling others that she was difficult for not essentially committing an act of slavery. Come on. You play the role of Medea, a big, black, strong woman. Okay, that's the role you play. Okay? Because <laughs> apparently there's woman. a level of appreciation you have for that black woman who's willing to speak truth to power. Well, now you're talking about another big black woman that has to speak truth to the power. The big named black Tyler woman. Brother, the light. This is the red roof, roof in intellectually because we're going to leave the light on for you. You don't understand the magnitude of how you can help heal the community by showing them you too are a human being. We're going to treat everyone like a human being because we love you enough. Come on. We love you enough and mm -hmm. want you. What was that movie, Cadillac Records? Yes. There was a scene in there in which mm. our brother, one of the greatest actors Jeffrey on the Wright. planet, Jeffrey Wright, yes. was confronted by the, the character named Wolf. Yes. And he said, I'm getting tired of you acting like you acting towards that white man. I want to see you have the privilege of being a man in and of yourself. We want to see you have the privilege, Brother Tom, of, of showing the world that you are a good dude. And I, I believe deep down you are. But the embarrassment from the audio where you say, y'all got it too hot out here, but you go to churches. When would Jesus think the right time was to go out and say I was wrong? Would it be when I promote my next movie and the heat continues? Would he wait until it's not hot out here? Or I, I, why? I don't understand why they're bringing up Jesus. Wasn't they having an open marriage? Why y'all bringing up Jesus, Tyler Perry, Jesus go to church, all this wasn't y'all having an open marriage? What you think Jesus got to say about adultery? Huh? What y'all think Jesus got to say about adultery? This is what I'm talking about. It's like they have so many grievances against people. They're talking all kind of stuff. And I'm like, it's just running all together and it don't make no sense to me. <sighs> what he want, his humble servants, as you claim to be, 
to the moment you identify that you are wrong, this is the moment we need to identify that I am wrong. Why have you not done that? That was in 2016. And I'm not going to speak belligerent to anyone because that is not alignment. That is not in alignment spiritually with me, with the universe. And what we're communicating today, this is not designed for everyone to appreciate. If you are vibrationally connected to what is right, the person who does wrong does not matter because wrong is wrong and right is right. And Brother Stephen A., the way in which you communicated, that's a great way to potentially be in alignment with the right people but you're not in alignment with what is right. And I want to say this to the younger generation. When y'all was having an open marriage, when y'all was, is, I don't know, having an open marriage, was that in alignment with God? Sydney, when you had other men plowing your wife, bending her over, is, is that in alignment with God? You see what I mean? People want to pick and choose what they want to live by. Don't even mention God when y'all living in an adulterous state. I don't understand. Y'all living in an adulterous marriage, have an open marriage. Sydney's screwing this one. She's screwing this one. But you talk about this and that is not in alignment with God. Is what y'all, well, I don't know. You know what? I don't even know what kind of God y'all talk about. Because she said something about the universe. So you know what? You're right. The God I'm talking about is the God of the Bible. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Where's my Bible? Mm -hmm. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe the God of the universe is okay with adulterous relationship. I don't know. But I'm just saying. I don't, don't even mention God. Please, I'm just, I can't with the fakeness. <sighs> Brother Greg, when you say the younger generation is watching, we want them to. We want them to watch so close and pay so close attention to the ones that are afraid, fearful, and to the ones that are saying, no, no, baby, you keep standing. And for those of you who say, well, Monique, why do you keep going? Because what we are showing the younger generation, until they hold, so they're accountable, you can't stop. Until you hold people accountable, you cannot stop. So to this younger generation, my babies, don't back down. Don't sit down. Don't lay down. Keep standing unapologetically. Keep standing. They are banking on you. They are banking on you to be so afraid of these invisible powers that be. Be so afraid of that, that you don't speak up and you don't speak out. That you just lay low and you be quiet and you take the abuse and you be exploited. They are banking on us to be that. They're banking on us. So for you, Stephen A. Smith. For you, Brother Greg Mathis, who I love dearly, your family, I love y'all. However, when you say the studios are watching, the executives are watching, but our community is suffering. And we, the Screen Actors Guild, the Writers Guild, just got finished striking. They were watching then. Yeah. They were watching prior to that. What we're looking for are the people who are in alignment with honesty. Because let me explain to you what can happen and how healing it is. See, last week when we spoke about The Breakfast Club, and our brother Charlemagne the God just taking ownership of it at the behest of a black woman named uh, Just Hilarious. Hilarious. Happy birthday, baby. And our brother DJ Envy, you was wrong for trying to make him apologize to daddy because she calls me daddy, but y'all keep forgetting that I call her mama. See, that's my mama right there, but we don't want to talk about that. And I'm not talking about the breakfast club. I'm just saying in general, but those three individuals got together and what was an issue for several years, it was resolved because we know how to forgive. There's a black man by the name of Lee Daniels. See, not only did this brother go so far as to apologize to us privately, he apologized publicly, but then this brother went and he spoke to our sons face to face and he apologized. That's what men do. That's how you heal. There is no shame in being wrong. The shame is knowing that you're wrong and not admitting to that wrong that you were a part of. So when you see these individuals with the mansions, with the cars and all of these things, in the words of our great ancestor, Bob Marley, <clears throat> some people are so poor, all they have is money. Come on. Don't be that. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Don't be that. I'm sorry to be chuckling. When I hear you, when I hear my son, when I hear you, Shalon, talk about money <laughs> and, I, and stuff, it's like, baby, as I told you when you were younger, I told you as a man. Don't let nobody introduce you to me. You know who your mom is. And when folks speak in reference to calling your seed, sometimes, especially when your seed 
decided to call things off with you because you didn't move for a 34 year old, 32 year old man um, in the time that he wanted to do because you as a mother, you as an entertainer, you as an actress, you as a uh, grandmother, you as a wife, a lot at the time to see him, but he pushed you away. But then when it's time for him and it doesn't work for you, now it's a problem. Listen, it comes a point in time where when you become a man, when you become a woman, it is your obligation. See, it's still the blame game. He's 34, but his pain is not 34, 32. His pain is from he was a little boy. Do you understand? Daddy, do you understand, Monique? Your son's pain is not that of a 34, 31 year old. You, that's what y'all refuse to understand. I wish y'all would go to counseling. The pain is the rejection as a child. That's that's the pain he's feeling. To do for you. Mm. To do for you. At 31, brother, 32, I'm sitting there on a conversation at the behest of your mother. Why? For you. Because I love my nephew. And we still let, uh, love you, Shalom. That's why your mother and your father interact with one another to let them be aware of what's happening with you. So if you think you're not loved, that's because you're not paying attention and the other dynamics that fall into play in which we completely understand. And for you too, we're going to keep the light on for you. But I find it extremely ironic that the last time you saw me, you wanted to be able to call me dad. Mm. And I couldn't allow you to call me dad because there's only one dad in your life. And he's a friend of ours. See mm -hmm. see how he's they do that? Like you, so, you, you, you wanted... You wanted to call me daddy, Monique was like, see, I don't like that. You don't understand what I mean, Monique? I don't like that. I don't like that. Again, we as people of color, let us stop being embarrassed about having conversations out loud because you never know who you could be helping. Please do not allow people to embarrass you out of life. I don't care if you're in the LGBTQ community. I don't care if you want to change your profession. I don't care whatever it is that you want to do. We have a finite amount of time to live on this plane. Please do not live on this plane based upon the ridicule you may or may not receive by someone from someone else. Be your authentic self because you're going to travel eternally by yourself. You can be in a room full of people, but you are always by yourself because your thoughts are right here. The spirit of who you are is right here. Be true to your spirit. Now, what I'm getting ready to, what we get ready to share right now is um. It's, go ahead. I think I know what you're talking about. No, yeah, you go ahead. To the degree where we're not going to stop being who we are, and we receive the death threat that we were supposed to apologize. We need to apologize. Apologize to who? We didn't quite find out. We didn't quite find out who they wanted us to do to that fool. But listen. We're going to be authentic to ourselves. So we take the death threat seriously, but it's so serious death that we have to further enjoy this time that we have here. We're in disputes with Oprah, Tyler, uh, uh, CBS. Why? Because we can't understand why a company such as CBS, how we can say you incrementally over five years made a one-time payment of $65 million. You made over $800 million by 2009 five years after the Parkers went off in 2004. We're in 2024 and you're saying the two and a half percent of what Monique and Countess are owed, you don't want to give it to us because you didn't make the money? How can you ever go into the red on a one-time investment where you've already superseded that investment by a thousand percent? Jesus. You can't. So the things that people are out there and they're astounded that we are saying, this is because Brother Judge Mathis, this is because the younger folks may be looking and we want them to be true to themselves, true and tell the truth. Because as our brother Steve Harvey said, there are repercussions that come from the truth, but we rather deal with the repercussions that come from the truth versus the repercussions that come with a lie. Come on now. Come on now. So we wanted to come on and share that with y'all today. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not, I'm not laughing at that, but it makes me, chuckle to say that 
someone, whoever it is, and y'all have been hearing what we've been saying, but someone or somebody's will send a death threat all because this little fat black girl and her husband telling the truth. Not because we stole nothing. Not because we hurt somebody. We didn't rob nobody. Just because they're telling the truth. So what we're saying to you young babies right now, keep telling the truth. Let nothing, let nothing stop you from telling the truth. Not, I don't want to say, we say your truth, the truth. Tell the truth. So we're not getting this confused with, well, my truth was, no, tell the truth. Because the truth may not be favorable for you, but it's the truth. Don't ever be afraid of telling the truth. And I believe our ancestors are saying, babies, y'all, please keep standing because we took the ass whoopings for y'all. We took these ass whoopings. We've already been here. And if we keep talking in private, Greg, we'll keep getting exploited. Because didn't y'all talk in private? Didn't the ones before you talk in private? And what changed? What got better? What got different? Because the private conversations never seem to make it to the light of day. So the shit that happened in the private can continue, can continue to happen because they knew the fear was placed in there. You better not say nothing. Would you be so kind as to share your story that you had with Brother Lee Daniels in your walk while y'all were filming in Pittsburgh? You, you know, I'm going to say this first, Daddy. Kick okay? it, kick it. When Lee and I talk, and Lee will say, Mom, I don't want to revisit it. You know, we got through it, and it's done. And I would say to Lee, Lee, you don't understand how beautiful what took place happened. I'm not saying it's never happened in history. I just don't know of it happening where you have a big time director and, a, and an entertainer and the director says, hey, I want to apologize. And they mend that friendship. They mend that friendship. Lee Daniels and I were going for a walk when we were filming the movie, The Deliverance in Pittsburgh. And he said to me, Mo, why didn't you just be quiet? Why didn't you just let this shit go? I said, Lee, had I just let this shit go, you and I would not be taking this walk down the riverfront. Now, let me just say this. I'm all for uh, justice, okay? You're not going to do wrong to me, and it's just going to go by. You're not going to steal my money, and, and it's, it's just going to go by. Uh-uh. You're going to do right by me, and you're going to give me what's mine. Now, personally, I don't have any problems with Monique trying to get her money. Do you understand? Because she worked for her money. So it's only fair that she get her money. Okay? So I don't have any problems with Monique trying to get her money. Okay? I just want to make sure, make sure I made that plain. And that, had, that went on for years, for years. So this is what we're saying to you, baby. But let them breathe okay. that in, my baby. Okay, you know I talk. You talk would not. Well, we talk and talk together. But I need people to breathe that in. We had I let it go, you and I right now, Brother Lee, would not have been able to go on this walk together as friends. So the conversation. I don't know about as friends, right but now, you know. Because the only real reason for war is to ultimately have peace, yes. especially when you're defending yourself. The reason we're having the conversations that we're having right now is for the purposes of a level of unification amongst folks. We'd love to go on that walk with you one day, Oprah. We'd love to go on a walk with you one day, uh, Tyler. But you know if you walk with us, we got to walk in truth. Mm. We're not going to walk in being uh, individuals that pretend to be something and that are not. I saw people scrutinizing The Rock the other day because he came out to apologize in reference to uh, asking people that didn't have a great deal of money to help with the funding in Hawaii. But he came out and he apologized and he said, I'm a quick study. Let me say this, ever so humbly from my perspective, I so appreciated that. I so appreciated that. And it made it further reinforced why people love that cat. Come on. Because he took ownership of it. He took ownership of it. What happened? I don't have no problem with Oprah and The Rock asking for money from Hawaii. The Bible says ask. The Bible says ask. Okay. And I didn't donate to The Rock and Oprah, but I made sure I get my donation into Samaritan's Purse. Shout out to Samaritan's Purse. That's Billy Grime organization. His son, Ben, what's his son? Billy Grime. Oh, his son is over it. See, what people don't understand, right? I might have gave, I don't know how much it was, 250 I don't know, 100 I don't remember. I got my 
my receipt here to give my tax accounting. But what people don't understand, you should ask. The Bible says ask. And what poor, broke mentality people don't go to church or read your Bible is, you might have gave $10. Let's say I gave $100 for my family, right? But let's say they raise $100 million. Do you think you're getting the harvest of $100? No, boo-boo. You are getting the harvest of $100 million. Do you understand? So I don't have any problems with anybody getting on the TV and asking. If they do, I just run on over to Samaritan Purse to see is Samaritan Purse going here, going there, and I'm going to send my harvest because I understand the Bible said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures pressed down, shaken together, running over will men give into your bosom. You plant a seed and you get a harvest. So I don't have any problems with the rock giving. I sure went on my computer and gave to Samaritan's Purse. And remember I told y'all last year how our family crossed this financial milestone that I'm writing about in my book, uh, Freedom Moon. Remember I tell y'all that? Listen, everything you give produces a harvest, y'all. So only poor mentality, broke mentality, poverty-minded mentality, people don't understand, read their Bible mentality is going to complain about the rock and Oprah give. Do you know the Bible says when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. You lend to the Lord. So if you give a dollar to the poor, you're going to get a dollar back. But when you give to the rich... Who acts? Oprah and The Rock. Because they have so much money in the spiritual realm, it's a, pos it's a harvest you're going to get. You give to Samaritan Purse because this person asks and that person asks, baby, you're getting a harvest. You're not going to get a dollar back. So I happily ran over there. Ooh, Sent our little offering over down there to Samaritan Purse for them to go help in Hawaii. And wherever there's a catastrophe, Samaritan Purse is there, we going to give. Because the Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. The Bible says, give. You will get a harvest. Come on, somebody. Years ago, the 1990s, I used to be, uh, follow them financial preachers when everybody else was this prosperity future preachers. And, and that one man, he used to say, money, come to me now. And me and Lexi, money, come to me now. Well, in 20 and 23, baby, money came to us and we saw a harvest. And for somebody that had a baby at 16, but at 45, at the time, I was 45, crossing that financial milestone, granted, yes, it's with my husband. You would have never expected a girl that had a baby at 16 to be at 45 crossing over this financial. I think I was 45. How old am I? 46. But when you have this poverty mentality, oh, they're asking for money. Yes, let them ask. Because um, you're going to get the harvest of a hundred million dollars and not a million dollars and not a hundred dollars. See, y'all need to read Freedom Moon. Y'all need to read Freedom Moon. What happened is Oprah, who teaches master classes, have you seen her talk about that as of yet? Have you seen her come out? What we're saying is we want you to feel what it's like to walk with the people in truth, not just be so elusive, so above everyone that you don't realize you are exactly like everyone because you too have an expiration date as do we all. So let's be good to one another while we have one another. Let's be, let's be that. And, and then let's see what happens. Then let's see what happens. So my babies, we glad. And thank y'all. You got any answers to my daddy? It was something, but I forgot. So what we're going to do is keep it pushing and tell y'all we so thank y'all again we are built for the criticisms of the individuals that are out there with ridicule 
because we are blessed to have those individuals out there that see past it and are saying, y'all keep on telling the truth and y'all encouraging us to tell the truth. And we hope we are encouraging you to continue telling the truth. And I'm going to see y'all uh, this weekend. Damn. I'm going to see y'all in Raleigh, North Carolina, hmm. Atlantic City, and Richmond, Virginia. And y'all know I got some sugar, honey, I see the say. Come on now. Now, the real <laughs> comedy is going to come in. All right, y'all. So I'm gonna that's what that's from what this to a what that's what they say. Let me know what you see, <laughs> what you got to say. I absolutely love you, my darlings. Let me talk to you later. Remember, remember uh the book signing club. If you've been emailing me, you haven't heard from me, just give me a day. I'm I'm so preoccupied with getting my site together because I have a free freebie for you guys. Um, and the husband profile course begins in April 6th. I love you. Love you. Love you. Talk to you later. Talk to you later. Let me know what you think. Love you. Bye.